So in this video, we're going to look at the Laplace transform of the second derivative. Now, these results will come in useful when solving differential equations. Now, if you get a differential equation, transform it into Laplace notation, then it comes sometimes easier to find a solution to a differential equation. I've got lots of videos in the link below for you to have a look at some of these examples. But in this video, we're just going to concentrate on this second derivative. Now, the previous video, we found the, foot, the first derivative, which our result is written down here. Now, we're going to need to use that when trying to find our second derivative. Now, you'll see why that is the case. Now, I like to use an integral formula for trying to find our Laplace transforms, and it's the most uh, used way to do that. So our setup for that is we find the limit as t approaches infinity. Now, t is a value for time, usually time in Laplace transform, and time is always from zero to infinity. So that's our setup with the limit. And then we have the integral from zero to t. And then we have our standard setup inside the integrand, e to the minus st. And then we want to find the Laplace transform of whatever's inside these brackets. In this case, it's the second derivative. And it's done with respect to t. So you can see here we've got exponential function and a second derivative. And this is where integrates, integration by parts will come in really useful for the, to try and find this result. OK, right. Now, let's have a look at this. We've got S here, which is our parameter. Now, we've gone over that in previous videos. So again, check out the link below. You'll see what that's all about. Well, let's take the integral of this part here. So we keep the limit. Now we've got the limit as t approaches infinity. That's going to stay. And now we're going to break this into, into integration by parts kind of uh, setup. So we're going to use this. So u and dv. Now you notice with our result here, we've got a v and a v. So whatever we choose as dv, we need to integrate it. Now, obvious best one here to integrate is f prime of t. Uh, so f double prime of t, because that's going to give us our f prime of t. So that's going to really help us out. So that's the method I'm going to use. So therefore, my u is going to be e to the minus st. So let's put our setup inside here. So u equals e to the minus st. So now we see here we need du. So let's go for that. So du equals, take the derivative of that with regards to t. So minus s is the constant multiple. So we multiply by that. So we've got minus s times e to the minus st. So our input for the exponential will stay as it is. So that's what we've got there for our u and our du. Now let's have a look at the dv. So dv, this one's a bit more simple to work out. dv will be f double prime. And therefore v is simply f prime of t by the theorem of fundamental theorem of calculus. So that's pretty straightforward. So now we've got that, we can set up this and find our result from here. So now we want u times v. So this one times this one. So we've got limit as t approaches infinity. And I'm going to put this in a bracket because this is actually part of our result. So we've got e to the minus st multiplied by f prime of t. And that's over our parameters of integration. And then we need a further bit, which is another integral. So we subtract new integral from zero to t, v times du. So f prime of t times this. So I'm gonna write this one first. So minus s e to the minus st, and then f prime of t dt. Okay, well, we can try and work out our result for this. So if we plug in t, which approaches infinity for this, that will then become zero as t approaches infinity. So therefore, we don't need to worry about what f prime of t is and use this for this particular part, as that will be zero as t approaches infinity. So that takes care of that part. But when t approaches zero, this becomes one 
and then this one will just have f prime at that zero. So anything to the power of zero is always one. So here we're going to have at t, which is zero, and then we're going to subtract this value at zero, which is just going to give us, that's going to be one, and then multiply that by f prime at zero. So that's our result for here. And we still need this limit. Okay, so let's just put a bracket in all of this so it's nice and tidy. And then we've got minus, minus, so that become a plus. So let's just put this result here in a bracket as well. And then we've got a plus. And this s is not in the integral uh, parameter here of t. So the s can come out the front. So we've got s and then the integral from 0 to t of e to the minus st f prime of t dt. OK, right, close the bracket. OK, so this bit's OK. We can deal with this. This bit, obviously, OK. But now we've got this bit. Now, I don't want to integrate that again if I can. But what we have here, we have this result here. Now, if I write this down, I'll set up in terms of this for that. If I just write it here, uh, just on its own, limit as t approaches infinity. To find, to find that, we've got integral from 0 to t, e to the minus st, f of t, dt. Now, we know that gives us that, which is s Laplace of f of t, minus f at zero. So we know that is the result. So we know that this is the same as basically this thing here. So basically, instead of trying to integrate this, we can just plug in our answer for that. And the limit is already taken care of in the question when we did that. So therefore, I can just plug that in for that whole integrand. So let's do that. OK, so now. Do I need the limit as t approaches infinity? I don't need it because I got my result just to plug in straight away. So that's all taken care of as far as the limit's concerned. So now I just need this bit. So 0 minus 1 times f prime at 0. That just leaves me minus f prime at 0. And then this one here, the end is just this. So I've now got to add s times, let's just put a bracket in there, S times the Laplace transform of f of t minus f at zero. And that just takes care of that. OK, right. Now let's just simplify this. And that's going to give us our answer for our second derivative. So now I'm going to write this down up here. So the Laplace transform of the second derivative, that's going to give me... Now as there's a minus in front, I always like to write my minuses at the back here. I like to always start off with a positive if possible. And I can see I've got a great opportunity. So I've got s times s. So I've got my parameter squared multiplied by the Laplace transform of f at t. And then I've got s times minus f at zero. So minus s times f at zero. And I've also got this one here, which is the first derivative calculated at t equals zero. OK, and now I'm happy with that as my answer for the second derivative. There we go.